mics are working. Hmm? Oh, yeah. That's fine. They're they're gonna project the loud anyhow. Let me see. So what's going on? We still have two minutes. Got two minutes? All right, let me see if we're going to do a pre-show here. They talked about doing a pre-show. I wondered why uh, Shakespeare is so popular, why he's lasted so long. You know, maybe it's because of the great uh, characters, King Lear, Othello, Hamlet. Maybe it's because of the plots, Romeo, Juliet, Macbeth. But you know, I think the real reason that he's so popular and he's lasted so long is because of the language that he used. Particularly the insults that you find in Shakespearean plays. I'd like to teach you something about the fine art of Shakespearean insults. You all have this little piece of paper. On the back of it are some Shakespearean insults, and it's very easy to do. All you have to do is put together one from column A and one from B and one from C. My favorite is ill-mammering, ill-nurtured flat dragon. <laughs> think about what we use today. Well, how do you insult people today? Now, be careful, this is a family audience. But you know, oh, you old goat or idiot or something like that. Try one of these and say, go ahead, try a couple. Pick one out and then just turn to your neighbor or somebody near you and just insult them. Do one, go ahead. Didn't that feel good? Those are powerful. You bobbing, fly-bitten harpy. Now there's an insult for you. You know, this works really well to combat road rage, too. Somebody cuts you off, instead of just blowing your horn at them or something, just pull out your Shakespearean insult kit and give them one. You're going to feel a whole lot better when you do. So, please attend our little drama and comedy. Listen to the language. Watch the characters. Pay attention to the plot. And suddenly, Shakespeare! somebody else, but what great storyteller doesn't, mm hmm Yes, old Willie Shakespeare wrote these stories about 400 years ago, and they are still being performed today. Now, everyone here has their favorite Shakespearean story to tell, and since I'm speaking first, I'm going to go first. <laughs> Island where he was shipwrecked with his daughter. 
daughter Miranda. Miranda has been on the island for as long as she can remember. Canst thou remember the time before we came unto this cell? Certainly, sir, I can. Tis far off, or rather like a dream than assurance. If I remember my remembrance once. Had I not four or five women once attended me? Thou hadst, and more, Miranda. Also living on the island was a strange, airy spirit. When Prospero was first shipwrecked here on the island, he came across an airy spirit called Ariel, who had been trapped in a tree. Prospero released the spirit, and now Ariel serves him. All hail, great master, brave sir, hail. I come to enter thy best pleasure. Be to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, to thy strong bidding test, Ariel, and all his qualities. Hadst thou spirit performed to point of the tempest that I made thee? To every article. How now, Moody? What is it thou canst command? My liberty! Before the time be out, no more. You see, Ariel wants to be free, but Prospero won't let him until he has done everything that Prospero wants. Prospero had Ariel create the storm and cause the shipwreck, because the men on board were the very same men that caused Prospero to become shipwrecked here. It was his brother Antonio who stole away his kingdom and sent Prospero out to sea to be lost forever. <laughs> also with Antonio on the ship was Prospero's, uh, Prospero's arch enemy, Alonso. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. A king. Alonso's brother, Sebastian, who was nobody important. And his son Ferdinand, who was his son Ferdinand. <laughs> Prospero has brought them here to teach them a lesson. Ariel washes them up on shore of Prospero's island. Oh, 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 Hagborn, not honored with a human shape. Caliban keeps making eyes at Miranda, the boss's daughter. Abhorred slave. <laughs> Hag seed hence. Fetch us in fuel and be quick. If thou neglectest or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll fill rack thee with old cramps, fill all thy bones with aches, and make thee roar. No, Brady! So, slave, hence. Caliban fetches fire with Prospero and generally takes care of the place. Caliban is the only man Miranda has seen, other than her father. Ariel draws the young man Ferdinand over to Prospero and Miranda live. Miranda sees Ferdinand and falls in love. I might call the thing of divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. Ferdinand sees Miranda and falls in love. Almost sure. The goddess on whom these heirs attend. Prospero discovers that he is the, en the son of his enemy Alonzo and decides to test their love. Oh, dear father, make not you ask a child of him, for he is gentle, not fearful. Speak not for him. He is a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shalt thou drink. Follow. Oh, none of such an attainment, so mine enemy has more power! Beseech you, father, sir, so have pity. Silence. Thou thinkest there is no more shapes as he, having seen the him and had him. Foolish wench, to the most of men this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections are young ones humble. I have no ambition to see a goodlier man. Might I through this prison once a day? You hold this man? It works. Ah, ah, speak not for him. Meanwhile, Alonso and his brothers Antonio and Sebastian. Ah, no. A mysteriously moved to another part of the island. What, what, what's happening here? What, we're being mysteriously moved to another part of the island. I don't understand at all what's happening. I swear. By area, who flies in and puts Alonso to sleep. <laughs> Antonio tries to get Sebastian to kill Alonso so that he will become king, just as Antonio disposed of Prospero to become Duke. Ariel wakes up Alonzo and goes to tell Prospero what they are planning. He drops his bike. <laughs> Meanwhile, on yet another part of the island, two drunks wash up on shore with a bottle of rum. <laughs> I shall I'm no more to see the sea. Here shall I die. Prospero's place, 
Ferdinand is gathering wood. We're on to meet him. They think they are alone, but Prospero is watching secretly. Do you love me? I, with a heart as open as bondage air of freedom. Will you marry me? Yeah. I, I will. I, here's my hand. So glad of this is they, I cannot be. On the other side of the island, Ariel torments Caliban and his newfound friends. to kill Alonzo. But Ariel flies in and torments them so they do not have time to carry out their plot. After having seen that uh, Ferdinand and Miranda are really in love, Prospero decides to be nice to Ferdinand and gives his consent for them to marry. If I have too austerely punished you, your compensation makes amends. For I have given you here a third of my own life, or that for which I live. But once again I tender to thy hand. Let me live here ever. A rare and wondrous father and a wise doth make this place paradise. Just as Caliban and his friends are about to kill Prospero, Ariel chases them away. <laughs> Antonio was amazed to discover his long lost brother here. <gasps> Passengers amazed. Wow. <laughs> Prospero tells Alonzo of the plot to kill him by their two brothers. Wait, I... Antonio apologizes to his brother. Give me that, that. No. <laughs> they do to my resign, and so entreat thee, pardon me my wrongs. Alonso discovers that his son is alive! Oh, son! <laughs> ah. oh. Prospero introduces Alonso to his new daughter-in-law. Uh, now all the blessings of a glad father compass thee about. They're all happily reunited, and now Prospero can leave the island. <coughs> he frees Ariel for good. Thou shalt be free. They all live happily ever after, and Caliban becomes king of the island. Urgh. That was great. That was absolutely wonderful. Um, that was beautiful. Turn around. That was good. my story. Now, my no, story is filled on, with what? 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 Who said you could go next? Well, no one actually. But... Just as I thought. No one. <laughs> my story is very sad. In fact, it is so sad that it's called a tragedy. Bill, who? It's about two young lovers, Romeo and Juliet. You can see how famous it is? Everybody here has heard of it. It all started out in an old city in Italy called Verona. There are two families, the Capulets and the Montagues. <coughs> Hate each other, we're constantly fighting. Bite your thumb, sir. I do bite my thumb at you, sir. Who do you bite your thumb at us, sir? What? Wilt thou draw among these heartless hides? Sir and Benvolio, look upon my death. But of thy sword, I do my keep the peace. <laughs> what? Drawn and talk of peace? I hate the word. <laughs> Ho, you men, you beasts! Stro 
of pain and torture. Throw those, throw the your mistempered webs to the ground and hear the sense of your moved prince. The prince declares that if anybody is caught fighting again, they would be put to death. Oh. Mr. and Mrs. Cavill have a 13-year-old daughter called Juliet. She is very beautiful. Now, Mr. Cabinet thinks it's time for Juliet to get married. You're getting married. <coughs> People got married very young in those days. <laughs> a young nobleman named Paris is very interested in marrying Juliet, and he asked Mr. Capulet if he may do so. <laughs> but, but now, my lord, what say you to my shoot? <laughs> what that that one. Right. Woo her, Paris. Win her heart. My will to her consent is but a part. Fine. <laughs> Juliet is not very interested in him. Mr. Montague has a young son, Romeo. Romeo finds out that the Capulets are having a big mass party and decides sneaking with some of his friends. Romeo and his good friends Benvolio and Marcuccia disguise themselves and crash the party. Romeo sees Juliet for the first time and instantly <coughs> falls in love with her. Tibble recognizes Romeo at the party and wants to be a mother. It's he! That's Philip Romeo! It's I'll not endure him! Mr. Capulet stops him. Go to, go to, thou art a saucy boy. It's not so indeed. Tibble storms out of the party. Romeo goes over to Juliet. Romeo is very happy to Caesar 
in spite of being caught or killed. Romeo leaves for another city. God. Now, Mr. Calculate arranges for the nobleman Paris to... Hey, hey. Oh, hey. Come on. Come on. Good boy. <laughs> now, Mr. Capulet arranges for the nobleman Paris to wed Juliet in two days' time. Juliet is told of her wedding to Paris. He'll marry in Paris. Get over there. Sorry. Juliet Bacheron, she will rather die than marry Paris. She's now desperate. She doesn't know what to do. Juliet goes to see Friar Lawrence. Friar Lawrence comes up with a plan. He has a potion, a fake poison, that when drunk will make it appear that Juliet is dead. Now when in the morning the bridegroom comes to rouse thee from thy bed, there art thou dead. Juliet rushes home and takes the potion. Juliet's nurse comes in and discovers Juliet and believes she is sleeping. Mistress? What mistress? Juliet! Oh, fast I warrant her. Bye, you slug a bit. <laughs> believes she is dead. Alas, alas, help! Help, my lady's dead! Friar Lawrence comes in, mourns and blesses the dead. And carries the body to the tomb of the Catholics. Meanwhile, in another city. Romeo's waiting for a message from the friar, but none has arrived. Romeo hears news of Juliet's death. He becomes distraught and buys some poison from a doctor. He heads to Juliet's tomb where he plans on killing himself. Friar Lawrence sent the message by another friar who uh, never <coughs> got the message, and uh, now he has to go to the monument alone. Paris comes to the tomb to mourn Juliet. <laughs> Romeo comes along and... Paris recognizes him as the man banished for murdering Tybalt, a family friend. Poor... Too late. Juliet awakes. He tries to tell Juliet what's happened and tries to get her out of there, but. Go, get the hands, Friar Lawrence, not away. Poison, I see, hath been his talisman. Oh, chill, drop all the love, no friendly job to help me after. Oh, kiss that look. Just nice, and I'll be brief. Oh, happy dagger. This is thy sheep, there rest and let me die. Tragedy. There was never a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Perfect time for my story. Oh, now, oh, why is oh, 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 what, 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 what? I think. What these good people really want right now is a scary story. Oh, no, 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 Fine, that's it. I quit. I'm calling my agent. Get out of my way. Don't worry, he'll be back. He doesn't have an agent. 
I know what good listeners like you really want is to have the living daylight scared out of you. <laughs> That's why it's the perfect time for my story. It's called the Crypt. Really scary. There are three witches in it. Scotland, there was a battle going on between England and the King of Scotland. Two great captains of the Scottish army, Macbeth and Banquo, fought the best to defend the King, Duncan. After a particularly bloody battle, they came upon the three witches. So fair and foul a day I have not seen. What are these? So withered and wild in their attire, they look not like the inhabitants of the earth. The witches predicted the future of the two men. They said that Macbeth would be promoted to Thane of Cawdor and then become king. All hail Macbeth! Hail to thee, Thane of Glam! All hail Macbeth! Hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor! All hail Macbeth! Hail to thee, Thane of that shall get king hereafter! Good sir, so, why do you start and seem to fear things that do not sound so fair? Speak then to me, you never. Beg no fear, your favors nor your hates. Hail! 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 Greater than Macbeth and lesser. Not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get king, though thou be none. So all hail Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth, all hail! <laughs> the witch is vanished. Your children shall be king. You shall be king. And Thane of Cawdor too. And sure enough, right after that, Macbeth found out that King Duncan had made him Thane of Cawdor. Ah, oh, worthiest cousin! Welcome hither, my most worthy Cawdor! Ah, ah. Not shaking your hand. Macbeth is amazed to see the witch's predictions coming true, but he cannot see how he'll become king because the king has a son, Malcolm, who is next in line for the throne. Macbeth goes back to his castle to tell his wife what the witch has said. Great glams, worthy Cawdor, greater than both of the all hail hereafter. King Duncan decides to visit Macbeth and his wife at their new castle. My dearest, Duncan comes here tonight. No, we could. And Lady Macbeth gives her husband the idea to kill the king. And when goes he? Well, tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall some that model see. If it were to be done, twere be done quickly, if, if we should fail. We fail? Ah, oh, but screw your courage to the second place, and we'll not fail. When Duncan is asleep. Is this a dagger I see before me? The handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch them. I have it not. And yet I see thee still. I go. And it is done. The bell invites me. Hit it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell.
Give me the dagger. If he do bleed, I'll gild the face of the groom with all, for it must see his guilt. Lady Macbeth places the dagger by the sleeping guard and smears him with the king's blood. Just then, Macduff, another nobleman, friend of the king, and the only Scotsman in this play without a kilt, comes to visit, Mac visit Duncan at Macbeth's castle. Come in! Come in! Come in! <laughs> Macduff discovers that the king is dead. All horror! All horror! Murder and treason! Bring the alarm bells! The king's son, Malcolm, runs away, afraid that he is the next to die. Macduff is suspicious of Malcolm, they chase us after him. Because the king's son is gone, Macbeth is crowned king. remembers what the witches said about Banquo. They hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they played a fruitless crown, no son of mine succeeding. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind, given to the common enemy of man, to make them kings, the seeds of Banquo kings. Rather than so, come fate into the list and champion me to the utterance. Macbeth hires two thugs to kill Banquo and his son Fleox. We are resolved, my lord. The murderers get Banquo. Oh. Fly, good Fleox, fly! 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 Die! The Fleox miraculously escapes. Thou miss revenge, O oh slave! Would you just die? Macbeth and his wife have a big party to celebrate the fact that he is now king. At the party, Macbeth is haunted by the ghost of Banquo. Only Macbeth can see the ghost. He gets really scared and runs off to visit the three witches. Oh, hell tight! 
Duff returns with Malcolm to do battle with Macbeth. Meanwhile, back at the castle, Lady Macbeth is feeling a little guilty. It is starting to go crazy. She keeps trying to wash the blood off her hands, even though there's nothing there. Out, that spot! Out, I say! One, two... Why then, it is time to do it. The day in a fight had a wife. Where is she now? What? Will these hands never be clean? Outside the castle, Malcolm and Macduff come up with a plan to sneak up on the castle. They cut down the trees and hide behind them. And move a little at a time so that no one will notice. Lady Macbeth goes totally crazy and kills herself. <laughs> Macbeth wonders what has become of him. Out! Out, brief candle! Place but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard of no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury. A messenger comes and tells Macbeth, As I stood by watch upon the hill, and looked out upon Burnham Wood, anon me thought, the wood began to move. Ring the alarm bell! Blow wind! Come rack! At least we'll die with Horace on our back! There is a big battle! Oh, on you, 
findings, my lord, here. The Duke gets sorry to take a message of love to Lady Olivia on the other side of the island. Hearing the Duke speak of love, Viney secretly falls in love with him. On the way to the other side of the island, uh, uh, Vida is shown in by a snotty servant, Malvolio. Madam, John Young Fellow swears he will speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why, of mankind. Of what personage and years is he? <laughs> Not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. Between boy and man. He's well favored and speaks very shrewdly. One would think his mother spoke or scarce out of him. Let him approach. Now, Viola tells the Lady Olivia of the Duke's love, but Olivia seems more interested in Viola, well, Cesaria. You see, yes, What is your character? Above my, above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn, thou art. Thy tongue, thy lips, thy face, actions, and spirit do give thee five gold blazes. Not so fast. Soft. Oh. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him say no more. Oh, unless perchance you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Now then, after Viola leaves, Cesario. Sorry. After Cesario leaves, Olivia takes off a ring and gives it to her snotty servant, pretending she had been given it. Run after that same peevish messenger, the country's man. Give up this ring with me, would I or not? Tell him I'll none of it. Madam, I will. Mm. Meanwhile, on another side of the island, Sebastian washed ashore. He has been saved by his friend Antonio. Sebastian wants to go to the court of Duke Orsino's court. But Antonio is afraid. I have many enemies in Orsino's court. Else will I very shortly see me there. I will come, because I, I do adore thee so. I, it's danger of seeing sport. They go off to the new sport. Meanwhile, Olivia's a snotty servant Malvolio catches up with Cesario. She returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my case from taking away yourself. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. I am the man, if it be so as tis. Oh, poor lady, she would better love a dream. Time thou must untangle this, not I. It's too hard enough for me to untangle. Vida returns to the Duke, who is listening to some music. I see a little silhouette of a man has got a moosh, has got a moosh. Music be the fruit of love. Play on. Give me exercise to fight. Galileo, 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 they talk of love, and Vida almost tells him she's in love with him, but she can't because he thinks she's a he. Gets me? Shall I chew your lady? Aye, that's the thing. To her in haste, give her this jewel. Tell her my love can give no place. By no, do not. On the way to Olivia's house, she is pestered by a jester named Festi. We will, we will rock you. Uh, no, sir, matter, sir, I do live by the church. Oh, thou a churchman. No such matter, sir, but I do live by the church, and I do live in my house, and my house that stand by the church. Oh, no, no, uh, Hold, there's expenses for thee. Uh, uh, would not a pair of these have bread, sir? I understand you, sir. She's well baked. <laughs> Viola then meets a silly knight, who is also courting the Lady Olivia. Ah, uh, Sir Andrew Aguchi. Oh, God save you, sir. And you, sir. Oh, Evogade, monsieur. Et vous aussi, votre serviteur. Ah, uh, I hope so, sir, and I am yours. Ahem! Oh. oh, most excellent, accomplished lady, the heavens rain orders on you. Oh. And you, 
Mains of their courtier, main odors well. When Olivia sees Cesario again, she tells him that she is in love with him. Uh, where you get that? Dear Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidenhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so that I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has, nor never none shall be of it, save I alone. And so, oh. adieu, good madam. Nevermore shall I my master's tears to you deplore. Oh. Sebastian finally arrives in the city. He has no money. Antonio lends him his money. And plan our meeting later in a pub. To the elephant. I do remember. And so Andrew learns that this Lady Olivia is in love with this messenger boy. He challenge, he finds him and challenges him to a duel. Now then, just as they are about to fight, Antonio comes by and sings Viola, thinking she's her brother Sebastian. Put up your sword. Now the police come because of the commotion and recognize Antonio, who owes the duke some money. I must entreat of you some of that money. What money, sir? Will you deny me? I know of none, no, nor are you by voice or any feature. Come, sir, I pray you go. Sebastian is wandering through the city when... The justice sees him. He has been sent by Lady Olivia to find Cesario. Would you have me believe you are not who I am sent for? Go to, go to. That old foolish fellow. Who be clear of thee? Mm -hmm. Sir Andrew comes along and wants to finish the fight. Oh, now, sir, have I met you again? There's for you. There's for you! Oh. And there's oh. for you! And this will be for you also, if you do not love, let me be. Oh. Are you people mad? This will I tell my lady straight. Hold! Huh? On my life, I charge thee, hold! Be not offended, dear Cesario. Prove me! Be gone! Olivia takes Sebastian to her house, thinking it is Cesario. Sebastian cannot believe what is happening. A strange, beautiful lady has just picked him up. Nay, come, I prithee. Would thou be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Olivia proposes. And Sebastian agrees. She fetches a priest. Uh, holy St. Francis. <laughs> Blame not this haste of mine. Now, if you mean well, now go with me and this holy man. Madam, I will go with you. And this man, by being sworn true, will ever be true. The Duke decides it's time to visit the Lady Olivia for himself. He takes Viola and goes to the other side of the island. They run into Antonio being taken to prison. This is the man that did me kindness. He, he drew upon my side, sir. The Duke decides to free Antonio. Here is the Countess. Now heaven walks on earth. Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam. Gracious Olivia. If it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to my ears as howling after music. Where goes Cesario? After whom I love. Cesario, husband, stay. Husband? I, husband. Can he that deny? Her husband, sir. No, sir, not I. Oh, oh my God. For the love of God, a surgeon, he has broke my head across. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The, the, the Count Gentleman, one, uh, Cesario! Oh, why do you speak to me? Uh, I've never hurt you. I, the bloody cocks gonna be a hurt. You have hurt me. I am sorry, madam. I have hurt your kinsman. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons. Brother, I'm your sister. So comes it, lady. You have been mistook. You would have been contracted to a maid. The Duke suddenly realizes that it is a Viola and not Viola whom he truly loves. Here is my hand. From this time forward, you shall be your master's mistress. <laughs> that is so sweet. They are all happy with their newfound loves and decide to have a double wedding. Ha ha ha! 
and one, two, and three. Yes. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. I told you my story was best, huh? I want to thank you all for coming, and I hope you had as much fun missing your story. Our levels now are ended. These our actors, as I foretold you, were but spirits and are vanished into air, into thin air. And like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a wrap behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made of, and our little lives are rounded with sleep. Oh, my. Almost as much as we enjoy telling them. Okay. <laughs>